Looking out over California's Silicon Valley, the Fazili family could have landed on another planet since leaving Afghanistan. And when we receive a United States and special in California, we are so happy because we are safe. Just a few months ago, the Fazilis were caught in the Afghanistan evacuation nightmare. They recorded this video during a Taliban shootout at their apartment building, which killed a neighbor. And spent three days of terror outside the Kabul airport, waiting for a flight out, sheltering their young daughters from the gunfire in a drainage ditch. The Fazili's first two months in the U.S. were spent in a military holding camp at Fort Bliss, Texas, living in a tent until they completed their visa applications and vaccinations and were finally allowed to travel to the San Francisco Bay Area to resettle. The Bay Area has the country's largest Afghan population. It's also one of the country's most expensive and tightest housing markets. I cannot let my Afghan people just be on the street. I was helping in a week about five, six families. Now that's, that's increasing by the double. And that's going to increase as well. Medina Sidiqui, a first-generation Afghan-American and volunteer for the local Afghan coalition, was able to get the Fazilis a hotel room for their first night and an Airbnb apartment in Hayward, California, just south of Oakland, for the next 30 days until they could find long-term housing. Nationally, Airbnb.org is committing to temporarily house 20,000 Afghan refugees as they look for longer-term options to permanently resettle in the United States. Aisha Irfan oversees Airbnb.org's humanitarian grants. She is one of the first calls that resettlement agencies make for new arrivals, like the Fazili's, often with less than a few days' advance notice of their arrivals with no place to stay. Over 6,600 hosts globally have committed to this cause of offering their homes to Afghan newcomers. Wherever you place an Afghan in the United States, they're going to want to travel to an Afghan hub. These hubs are the Bay Area, potentially L.A., Seattle, D.C., Virginia area, and New York City. Hayward Councilwoman Aisha Wahab is the country's first Afghan-American woman elected to public office. She knows firsthand the challenges the local Afghan community has faced since they first started migrating here in the 80s and 90s after the Soviet occupation and Afghan civil war. People like store owner Fresha Kwaja. We tried to make them as comfortable as possible because we went through the same thing. You know, they, they should be very, very lucky that we are here and helping them, are helping them. But 45 years before, none of this was available. When it comes to being able to translate or interpret or explain cultural nuances and really engage with the new arrivals, the Afghan-American community that grew up here in the Bay Area would be able to help step up significantly. When the whole Afghan crisis happened, like all Afghans, uh, my family and I, we were pretty devastated. We were trying to do everything we could to help. Leila Mir, a former accountant and financial advisor, is now cooking and delivering each week nearly 100 home-cooked Afghan meals for the refugees with help from Chef, a regional online food service specializing in ethnic cuisines. Preparing a meal and giving back is also a part of my family and culture. I think Afghans, we love to feed. We will feed complete strangers. If, if we know there's somebody in our community, we will make sure there's food on their table. Each meal comes with a note. Dear fellow Afghans, peace and blessings be upon you. Welcome to the United States. I hope that you enjoy this food. As to be expected, the larger local Muslim community is playing a major role in raising money, clothing donations, and other services for the new Afghan arrivals. Amina Abdullah heads up the Muslim Community Center in Pleasanton working together with other local mosques. I think it stems from our faith, our duty to serve and take care of those in need. And the Afghan crisis just gave us an opportunity to do what it is we're supposed to do. So too are the other mostly faith-based resettlement agencies, like the local Jewish Family Services in Oakland. 
It does not surprise me because I think faith-based communities have always stepped up and their number one key principle, regardless of religion, is humanity. I will say that the Jewish community has stepped up probably the most, but they have historically stepped up for Afghans. Um, even the Afghan coalition was founded by a grant of $10,000 by uh, one of the Jewish organizations. Is there one generous person will commit to $15,000, inshallah, for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan? Afghan refugee fundraisers, like this one at a local Afghan banquet hall, are also raising funds for their Afghan relatives, still wanting to leave and trying to survive the Afghan winter, now that fuel and food imports have been cut along with foreign aid. And why should we help these new arrivals? Because they served the United States military. They were promised that if you serve the United States military, with the risk of death in Afghanistan, you would be able to come to the United States. We want to leave Afghanistan. And we don't uh, attention about where we want to go and when, uh, which city of America. Just we want to leave Afghanistan because the situation is so bad. How important is it to have the Afghan community around you? Do you feel a bit more at home because there are people from your culture living close by? I'm Afghan and I love Afghan people and I'm so happy <clears throat> which I am in this place and I'm near of my Afghan people. The local Marine Corps Reserve Unit's annual Toys for Tots campaign has added Afghan refugees to their holiday list of needy families this year. The city of Fremont's Mayor Lily May and Afghan-American volunteers like Mina Adida led the $10,000 toy shopping spree. This would be the ultimate surprise for them. I don't think, they, you know, they're struggling to get basic necessities met, so this would be just a huge treat for them and their families. Especially for families like the Fazili's this holiday season, having recently arrived in the U.S. with no other possessions than the clothes they were wearing. For the PBS NewsHour Weekend, Mike Saray reporting from Fremont, California.